Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn that a word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go to um, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. It's what I've been waiting for. It's Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they, that they may search the land of Canaan. Right? So remember, you got to, just to set up the context, make sure we understand where we are. We were in Egypt. We come out of Egypt. We are given that this is the first day. I'm sorry, the first, the beginning of months, the first year. Right? We fast forward the beginning of the second year. We set up the tabernacle in the wilderness. Right? Fast forward a month or so, you know what I'm saying? And then we start counting the people. Okay? Now, we're about to scope out land. Originally, when we left Egypt, what was the promise? Why were we leaving Egypt and where were we going after we left Egypt? You don't know? Take the hood off your head. You look ridiculous. <laughs> You're inside, that's what. It's not raining. So we were going to go to the land of milk and honey. Right? We were going to go to the land of Canaan. Because that's the promise that was given to our father. Who's our father? Who was that promise given to? Let's go. This is uh, Genesis chapter 15. Excuse me, baby girl. I'm trying to work over here. It's Genesis chapter 15. What verse I want? Probably like eight. Excuse I'm trying to work. Eight, he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know I shall inherit it? Mm, nah, you know what I'm looking for, though, right? Um, no, no, no. Um, the vision. Is it 15? No, 17. 17? I think 17 is a vision. No, nah, it's in 15. No, nah, 17 is circumcision. It's in 15, but it's like uh, maybe it's verse 15. It ain't 15, 15. That ain't it. What's the last verse? 21. Oh, okay, so it, it, maybe it is uh, 15. Check, tell me what 15 says. And you shall go to your father's in peace. No, nah, it's verse 9. Give me verse 9. <laughs> this is uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 9. And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Mm -hmm. And he took unto him all, th all these and divided them in the midst, and laid each one. Each piece one against the other. Mm -hmm. But the birds divided he not. And when the yeah. fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And watch, lo, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep, it fell on Abram. And watch, and lo, lo, lo mean look. You know what I'm saying? Pay attention. Watch this. A horror of great darkness fell upon him. Uh huh. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs. 
and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them, afflict them 400 years. Mm -hmm. And also that nation whom they shall serve, I will judge. Uh -huh. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Mm -hmm. And you shall go to your fathers in peace. Uh huh. But watch this. You shall be buried in a good old age, but in the fourth generation they shall come here again. They shall come where again? Here again. Where is he at? For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. He's in the land of the Amorites. He's in the land of Canaan. Right? So the promise was given to Abraham that at some point, the, after the fourth generation, your, your children, your descendants, were going to end up coming back to Canaan. And you would have this land. So now when, when Moses took, took uh, the people and, and the Most High God gave him a vision, he told Moses the same thing. He said, this is what was given to Abraham. I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey was the promise. You got Levi, Kohath, Amram, and Moses. Fourth generation. So we end, up, we end up looking forward to seeing a land of milk and honey when we left Egypt. He didn't tell us how long we would be in this wilderness. He just said we were going, we were going to a, a land flowing with milk and honey. So up to this point, it's been a year. It's been over a year. And we haven't seen anything with milk and honey, right? Only thing we've seen is a desert. We haven't seen when they say milk and honey, we're saying that it's a beautiful land, a lot of resources in the land. Hey, baby girl, don't touch that. A lot of resources in the land, right? So we haven't seen that. The people are waiting on that. Now is our first chance to see this. Right. In Numbers chapter 13, the Most High God told Moses, all right, pick a few people going over there. Go check out the land. Right. We haven't seen the land so far. We just been in the desert. Walking around in the desert this whole time, tired. Right. Eating manna every darn day. Right. So let's see what happens. This is uh, Numbers chapter 13. What verse we leave off on? Two. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 2. Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I gave unto the which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. Uh-huh. So now he told him, he said, You're gonna pick one person from each tribe, and it has to be a ruler. So in other words, it has to be somebody with authority in that tribe. So remember, we talked about the tribes, which are the 12 sons of Israel. One of the sons, Levi, was divided amongst all, right? According to the, the, um, the word that um, Jacob spoke on his son. Then you have another son that was divided into two, right? And that would be Joseph, who was divided into Ephraim and Manasseh. So if you do that, you work out with 12 separate tribes, right? Keep going. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men, heads of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And these were their names the, of the tribe of Reuben, Shemua, the son of Zachur. Right. So right now it, go, it goes through each of the tribes and the individual that was chosen to go through. Right. Keep jump on down. Uh, what do I want? Jump on down past that to 16. where they actually go. These Look. are the names of the men which Moses sent to spot the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Yehoshua. Mm -hmm. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go into the mountain. Mm -hmm. And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell there, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be, that they dwell in, whether the tents or whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time for first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. Right? So they went into the land, they entered at the so the, the southern piece of the land, right? So they went up to go into it. Now, they're looking for what's good in there. Is it good? Is it bad? You know what I'm saying? What do they have? What type of resources can we deal with? Is it nice over there? Is it something we can work with? They had to spy out the land, right? Let's read what they were supposed to be looking for again. Whether it be fat or lean. They're supposed to be looking at whether the land is fat or lean. In other words, 
Is it rich with resources? Is it a lot of stuff? Or is it nothing? Is it a barren place? Is it like a desert in there, right? So whether it's fat or lean. Whether it be good or bad. Whether it's good or bad. The be- land, right? They, well, is the land good or bad? Right? Is this good land or bad land? Watch this. What cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds? Right? Are the cities, when you look at the cities, is it a bunch of cities with tents? Or do they got brick walls that's covering them up? Right? Is it tents or strongholds? Keep going. Whether it be wood or not. Mm-hmm. Whether it be of good, uh, and be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. Mm-hmm. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. Mm-hmm. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Mm-hmm. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Right? So they start seeing stuff like, oh, look at this. They took a cluster. So remember, the, they're coming in as spies. So when they come in, they just acting like, oh, we just visitors. They acting like regular people. Right? We just visitors. They don't know nothing about them. Right? We children of Israel. It ain't like we've been on the map. Don't nobody know who we are. So we just walking around just like we, we just spies. But we act like we just regular people. So we just walk in. Oh, look at them grapes. You know what I'm saying? Take some of them grapes. Because remember, he told them. Take some of the stuff and bring it back. So they took the grapes. They took some pomegranates. They see some food there. They see some stuff. That's how they can prove, oh, this is good land. Right? Watch this. And the place was called the Brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from there. Mm-hmm. And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. Right? So they was there 40 days. It's a long time. It's over a month they spent the time in the land. And they searched it out. So they came back after 40 days. What happened? And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh Mm -hmm. and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. And they told him and said, we came unto the land where you sent us and surely it flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. So who are the children of Anak? Giants. These were the giants. So if y'all remember, we talked about giants way before when we talked about Genesis and Noah, right? When, it, when the flood came. Part of, that, part of that, uh, that scenario there is you had giants. And the giants were a product of angels coming down. And they started to marry the women, right? And so since angels married the women when they had children... Their children were called men of renown, right? They were, they were, they were different, right? And some of them ended up, the descendants of some of those uh, children ended up being giants, right? So these giants, these people that came from the giants, right, they're in this land. And so when we went over there, although we were supposed to only be looking at the land and how good the land is and in the strongholds, right? Did the people live in tents or were the people built up or surrounded by brick? That's the only thing we're supposed to be looking at. When we saw the people, we is looking like, watch this, watch what they say. And the Amalekites dwell in the land in the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Right? So now... The you got you got to look at the numbers, right? They sent one for each tribe, so that would mean how many went? Twelve, right? So twelve would have gone, right? Now you have Caleb. It's like, nah, man, we can go up there. We could take it. That means the other we know is ten, but if we only knew about uh, uh, Caleb, there's one more, Joshua, who's a, is another one that that is willing to go. They're not afraid. The other 10 are afraid because they see that all these people that they up against are giants. They said that they look like it's like the way we look at grasshoppers is how they look at us. That's the the way they pictured it. They're like, we so small to them, we like grasshoppers to them. Right? Because these people are so big. They're going to kill us. We can't take these people. So Caleb jump in. He be like, no, 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 no. We can just go up there and get it. Why does Caleb think that? Why does Caleb think he can beat up giants? 
Because Most High God with him. Only because the Most High God told him, right? Most High God said, I'm taking you to a land of milk and honey. All I need you to do is scope out the land. Go look for this, that, and the other. They came back. They looked for everything they're supposed to, but they came back also talking about the people. The Malachites over there, the and the the, and the the sins of Anak is over here. He didn't ask none of that. He didn't tell you to go scope none of that out. He just told you, go scope out the land. How the land built, what's growing on the land, and they came back with ex extra. That's irrelevant to a man with faith. A man in faith would be like, man, look, I seen what the Most High God just did to Egypt. You have to put it in context. Without seeing what, what happened to Egypt, perhaps you might be like, I oh, don't know, man. We can't take these guys. But when you know what just happened and you believe in the man now, it's like, man, no. The man said we can do it. We can do it. We didn't have to lift a finger in Egypt. We didn't have to fight one person when we got out of Egypt. They just let us go because the Most High God hit them with plagues. So now the most high God said we're going to a land of milk and honey. Well, gosh darn it. There's some darn milk and there's some darn honey in this land. Let's get it. That's how Caleb is thinking. Watch this. That's not normal though. I want y'all to understand what Caleb is doing right now is not normal. Nine times out of ten, we would have been one of the ones looking at, man, there's some giants over there. Right? Caleb got the spirit of the most high God in him. And it shows in his action. That's the only way you know that you're working with the spirit. Only because it's showing you, you can't just say in your mind, like, man, I feel like I got this. Like, ooh, I feel like, ooh, I kind of feel a spirit in me. You know what I'm saying? I kind of feel like I got the spirit right now. You can't do that. A lot of people do it, but that ain't, that ain't an appropriate way to see it. The only way you see it is in your action. You mess around, got the spirit, you won't even know it. Right? The only way you know it is if you know the book. And the only reason you know it because you know the book is because your, your life, your actions, your behavior, your thoughts, all that starts to line up with what the book say it is. Right? So you look at Caleb, and Caleb just looking at him like, man, the most high God said we can get it. We can get it. Right? Watch this. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses had said, Let So him. he stilled the people. So you got to understand, it's 12 people that go out there. Right? They come back. They talking to a million plus people. Right? So if they come back, remember, the reason that we left Egypt is for what reason? Come on, y'all got to be sharp. Why did we leave? We just talked about it. Where are we going when we left Egypt? A land with milk and honey. That's the reason that we left. It's been a year. We ain't seen no darn milk. We ain't seen no darn honey. Right? Now, it's time to scope out the land. Everybody can't go, though. Only, only 12 people can go. So the 12 go. We waiting 40 days because we can't wait for them to get back. Because you got to imagine, this is exciting for us. We've been out here in the desert walking around. Now, finally, we get to see about the milk and honey. Can't wait for these boys to come back and tell me what it's like. Because we're almost there now. We've been waiting. Remember, when we left Egypt, we thought it'd be maybe a week, a couple weeks, maybe a month or two. And we'd be there. No, now, it's, you know, we're in our second year now. It's been over a year. So we anticipating this stuff. It feels close. Go spy out the land. Okay, they come back. Now they come back, and they come back saying, no, nah, it's nice, man. I think that's a good land right there. But there's some giants. And them boys going to work our butts if we try to go over there. How do you think that makes people feel? Scared. Now they scared. We've been waiting anxiously. We ready to go, right? Ready to go into the land. And then they come back with this report like, no, nah, man, it ain't going to be as easy as we thought it was going to be. Now everybody gets scared. So now that's why the book say Caleb steals the people because Caleb is jumping out like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. No, we got this. He tried to encourage the people again. Watch this. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Right? He said, no, nah, man. Now they arguing with Caleb in front of the people. Caleb is one person. He jumped out there like, no, nah, I think we can do it. We can take it. Right? Now all, all of them, who got the more numbers? The other ones. How many of them is? Twelve people went. It's only two that believe we could take it. So how many is left? Ten. So that's ten people against one. How that's going to look? If you don't know better, if you, you can't tell who right or who wrong, but you see ten people and you see one person, who, who you going to believe? 
Nine times out of ten, we're going to believe the ten people. We're going to go with the majority. Right? That's why the book, hold we got. Uh, grab Exodus chapter 25. This Exodus chapter 25. You can give me verse 1. We'll read on down. I think what I want is like verse 4. But it's Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. You got to understand how, how wise and informed this law is. You know what I'm saying? This law gives us information that if we take and we apply it to our lives, man, we won't make a wrong turn. If we take it and we understand the, we understand the principles behind this law, man, we won't make a bad step. This law will protect us. You remember we, a couple, uh, uh, for uh, the first day of Unleavened Bread, we put it up on the board where we showed that path. You know what I'm saying? You had that path. And then you put the, uh, you know what I'm saying, we put the laws, I mean, the, uh, the you know what I'm saying, the, the sins around the path going behind you, you know what I'm saying, and then, you know what I'm saying, the fruits of the spirit moving forward, the law is even tighter than that. You know what I'm saying, I'm going I'm to do another one just so we can see where the law fit and all that. The law make it even tighter than that. Your, your path to be so straight if you keep that law. Right? Because it restrains you even more. Right? It informs you even more. It gives you even more direction. Right? Keep going. Watch this. This is uh, Exodus chapter 25, verse 1. Watch what the book say. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that gives it willingly in his, in his heart. Ye shall take my offering. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. That's 25? Yeah. Uh, what do I want? 23? 23, maybe. I want 23. This is Exodus chapter 23, yeah. verse 1. Yeah, you want 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Uh-huh. You shall not follow a multitude to do evil. You shall not what? Follow a multitude to do evil. He said you shall not follow a multitude to do evil. What does that mean? If there's 10 versus 1, don't go with the 10 just because it's 10. Right? That's in our law. Multitude means like a lot of people. Yeah, multitude means a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of folks. Right? So that's in our law. It's saying just because there's a lot of people saying something, don't just go with it just because. You got to make sure it's right. Because if you end up following them and they're doing evil, that's a sin for us. Right? Let's jump back over. It's Numbers chapter 13. Where we leave off at? Uh, 31. It's Numbers chapter 13, verse 31. What the book say? But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Mm -hmm. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw, all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Mm -hmm. They giants. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came, which come of the giants. And mm -hmm. we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Mm -hmm. That's the end of it? Yeah. Watch this. This is, uh, this is uh, Numbers chapter 14. Watch what happened now. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Right? Why do you think the people cried and started weeping? Because they think they're going to get killed. We was excited about this. This is what we've been waiting for. We've been sitting here patient. You got to imagine. We've been sitting here walking around in the desert. Listening to Moses tell us laws, everybody talking about what this thing might end up being. We get tired and thirsty and complain about being out here because we've been out here so long. Moses get us water and it make us feel cool for a little bit longer. Then we get hungry and he give us manna. Then we get hungry again and he give us quail. And we sitting out here and we trying to make it home out here. But this just really ain't home. It's a desert. We outside every day. We living in tents. Right? I want to go somewhere that's home. Yes, we left Egypt and that's cool, but this ain't really better than Egypt. Right? The reality is we was in Egypt, but what we doing right now, walking around in the desert is not better than what we had in Egypt. The only reason we out here is because we were told that we going to a land of milk and honey. It's been over a year and we haven't got there yet. Now we finally get a chance to hear what this thing is like and they tell us we're not going to be able to do it. That's sad for us. 
So we break out and we start crying. Now we don't believe we'll be able to do this. Watch what happens. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, I wish to God that we had died in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Or I wish to God that we had died in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And why has the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Mm -hmm. Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, ripped their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceedingly good land. Right. It, so it, now, Yahushua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, they came back and they said, Listen. We can do this, y'all. It was a good land. He, they see all the people crying. The people setting up. They, they about ready to get a, pick a captain to take them back to Egypt. Because, again, like I said, the, what they're dealing with in the wilderness is not better than Egypt. So, in their mind, if we can't go into that land, I'm definitely not staying here. I'm just not doing it. It would be better for us to go back to Egypt. Let's see. Keep going. Watch this. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Mm -hmm. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade, stone them with stones. Right? So now they looked at them and they said, because you have to think about this. There are millions of people, at least a million people. Right. And there's only two of those people that's saying, let's go. You know how that feels? You're trying to set us up. So they said, stone them, kill them. Right. If they trying to set us up, they trying to take us over there and they know that we can't win this. We need to kill these boys. So they're about to pick up stones to get them. But watch what happened. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be? That's the next that one. They... Go back. Wait. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Right. So imagine this. Right. Uh, just just so y'all can see the scene. You got two people standing right here in front of all the people trying to talk to, to as many people as they can. Right. The two people right here surrounded by the, the general folks, right? So all the people are surrounding them, right? So the people, two people start talking like, no, nah, we can do that. Everybody else is sad, like, what are y'all talking about, right? Then they get mad that they even telling us that we can do it when we all, in our mind, know that we can't. So we all pick up stones. Everybody just start picking up stones about to, about to throw them at the people and kill them, right? At the two. So they about to pick up stones and kill them. Then right when they're about to, just imagine, right when that first stone is about to be thrown, the glory of the Most High God just fill up everywhere. You can just see clouds and smoke just start filling up, and it's special. When you look at it, it ain't nothing like you've seen before. Why? Watch what happened next. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere that they believe? Will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed among them? Mm -hmm. I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than they. Right. So he told Moses. Oh, they about to kill these boy for telling them the truth. So he, he stopped it from happening by, by creating a little bit of shock. Then he only talked talk to Moses. He looking like, how long I'm going to deal with this? I tell you what, I'm going to kill these boys with the pestilence. And I'm going to make a greater nation out of you. Talking about Moses. Moses, you're going to have some kids and we're going to rebuild this whole thing. A million plus, just like this. We're going we gonna to rebuild this whole thing, right? Let's see what Moses say, though. And Moses said unto the Lord... Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for you brought us, for you brought up this people in, in your might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that you, Lord, are among this people, and that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and that they, and that your cloud stands over them, and that you go before them by day, by daytime, in a pillar of a cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you shall kill all this people as one man. Then the nations which have heard the fame of you will speak, saying, It's because Yahuwah was not able to bring this people into the land which he swore unto them. Therefore he has killed them in the wilderness. And now I beg thee, 
Let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long suffering and great, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. All right? So notice how Moses did this. It's very important that we are, we're going to read that again. It's very important that we understand how Moses pr proposed this to the Most High God. The Most High God, he proposed something first. He said, You know what? I'm going to kill all these boys. And I'm just going to take you, Moses. You're going to have a few more kids. And we're going to make a better nation than what we're dealing with right now straight from you. Right? So in other words, we're going to start all the way over. We're going to rebuild this thing up the right way. And we're just going to do it again. And I'm still keeping my promise to Abraham. Because, because he is son of Abraham. Right? So now that's what God proposed. Moses came back and was like, eh, hold on. Because if you kill all these people, now all the people in the G Egypt is going to be like, well, the Most High God took them from Egypt, but he wasn't able to bring them into the promised land. God failed. God didn't have enough strength. He was like, now, God, we know that ain't true. But that's what all these other people going to think. But you know God ain't going to let his name be sullied like that. They going to start worshiping other gods because they going to be thinking like, oh, no, you can't rely on that God. That guy might just take you out of somewhere and then leave you stranded because he ain't got the power to follow all the way through. So Moses appealed to God's glory. That's the first thing he looked at. Like, oh, God, you can do that. But, you know what I mean, that thing might be rough on your name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then after that. That's going to tarnish your reputation in these streets. Yeah. Then after that, he came back to him and he said, now, why don't you just let these boys off a little bit? Why, why read it again. Watch this. I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according to as you have spoken, saying, the Lord is long-suffering right? and great mercy. Let, let thee boil off, right? You said you was merciful. When did he tell us that? When he brought us out of Egypt, in Exodus. It's in Exodus, I think it's 34 he told us this. Yeah. Right? So Moses is using the Most High God's own words to support the, a different position. Right? And now listen, why don't you do like you said? You said you would be long suffering and merciful and forgiving iniquity and transgressions to thousands. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And by no means clearing the guilty, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beg thee, the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of your mercy. And as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of you. Mm -hmm. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness. And have tempted me now these ten times. And How many times? Ten times. So and all this stuff that we've been reading over these last weeks. Most high God been counting them. Right? You have to understand how the Most High God works. He might not say nothing to you, but he is paying attention to everything that's happening. It's only us that's running around thinking that we're getting away with something. Ain't nobody getting away with it. Nobody gets by. Nobody's getting away with anything. But at some point, the Most High God say, I've had enough. And this is the type of stuff that happens when he's had enough. He's ready to kill all, kill all of us. We in the wilderness, he's ready to kill every last one of us. Moses had to intercede in front of him, like, no, 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 not, not all of them. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know what I'm saying, we think about this a different way. Maybe you forgive him, give him another chance. Well, the Most High God been giving it. He said, ten. He said that to Moses to let him know, I've given him 10 chances. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's 10 times they didn't mess with me. I've given him 10 chances. <laughs> but he let it off with it. Yeah, I'll pardon him, according to your word. It's important that he said, according to your word. Because what did Moses quote to him? Long suffering. Forgiving the iniquity to the transgressions by no means clearing the guilty. Did, did Moses quote all of it? Visiting the iniquity to the fathers of the children, to the third and fourth generation. Did he quote all of it? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's, it's Exodus. See if it got in the reference where it is, because I can't remember where it is. I think it's 34, Exodus 34. Six. It's 34, verse 6? Yeah. It's Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. I didn't think it was at the beginning. Let's see if Moses quoted the whole thing when he spoke to the Most High God. And 
And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahuwah, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness mm -hmm. and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that they and that will by no means clear the guilty, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, until the third and fourth generation. Uh huh. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. Right. So when Moses heard that, he bowed his head to the earth and worshipped. Whose words were those? Well, I got. So now Moses quotes that and gives it back to the Most High God. So the Most High God says, okay, according to your words, I'll do it. When he's saying your words, he's talking about his own words. He, according to what you just said, I'm going to do it. But what you just said is what I said. So now, Nobody who is guilty is going to get by because that's what he said. What he also said is, I'll be merciful and long suffering. So, what does that mean? Let's go back to numbers and let's see what that means. Yeah, patience. Yeah. All right. That's what long suffering means. Long suffering means patience, right? Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness. And have tempted me thou these ten times, and have not listened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Mm -hmm. But my servant Caleb, because he has another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, mm -hmm. him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Bro, do you know how mad I'd be if I was Caleb and had to sit there for 40 years? Yeah, on account of y'all foolishness? Yeah. Like, I got to wait till y'all die before I get in. Like, I probably would look at that and be like, man, ain't you going to die yet? That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? You see how <laughs> the sin of all these people affect even the people that do right. Yeah. If I was Caleb, I'm like, man, you need to hurry up and die, bro, so we can go. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow, turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation mm -hmm. which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Mm -hmm. Say unto them, Surely, as truly as I live, says Yahuwah, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, Doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swore to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Yahushua, the son of Nun. Right? So now we know that why we begin, we begin this book by numbering the people. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of people look at it like, hmm, I wonder why God numbered the people and all that. This is why. There's a record now. Everybody who's fit for war, 20 and above, number their names. Right. So now when the people said they start complaining about God, oh, man, this giants over there, we can't whoop out these giants. Why did we even get brought out here? Did the most high God bring us out here just so our, our children and our wives could die? So the most high God came back and he said, I'm going to be merciful, long suffering, patient. But ain't nobody who guilty is going to be cleared. So now the men of war, the ones who were responsible for going up and fighting them giants that got scared against his word, y'all are the ones that got to deal with this. Your wives and your children, they're going to be able to walk right on in. Y'all but though, every last one of y'all going to die. Not one of y'all going to make it in. Your carcass going to fall right in the darn wilderness. And that's how he set it up for them. So in order to establish that, he had to put a count in at the beginning. The most I got already know how it's going to play out. That's us that sit here, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. We just got to make choices. That's us that got that mindset. The most I got is like, man, if you do what I tell you, I'll tell you exactly how it's going to play out. But you ain't going to do what I tell you. So, you know what I'm saying? Let me just set this up. Make sure I'm ready for when you disobey. So he get the number of all the people. That way, it's on record. Oh, you was a man of war, too. Oh, yeah, but you didn't think we could do it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you sit your butt down? Right. So now the next 40 years that we're going we gonna to deal with, we're going to be in the wilderness until everybody 20 or up at this point dies. 
then you'll have a whole new generation that's ready to go into the uh, go into the land of milk and honey. I mean, if you were among that number and nobody over sixty, ain't nobody living over sixty. You know what I'm saying? If you tw if you twenty, you know what I'm saying? You're not living over sixty. Yeah, no. Yeah, they had a short life. Yeah, the young ones, yeah. Yeah. But if you was nineteen, I would have like birthday <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I ain't 20. Uh, I ain't 20. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I ain't 20. I'd be like, whoa. Don't put my name on that darn list. <laughs> don't you go and count me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, been, Just made it. <laughs> man, the oldest male ever to go to war would have been what? 40? Yeah. No, I mean, 60? You would have been 60, 59, probably 59 years old. Oh, you know, yeah. Be like, man, I was 19, boy. Just made it. Let's get it. But your little ones, which you should be, a, which said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. Uh huh. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even forty years. And you shall know my breach of promise. I, Yahuwah, have said, I will surely do it unto you, all this evil, gener uh, evil congregation mm -hmm. that are gathered together against me in the wilderness. They shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Mm -hmm. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing Watch up the slander the upon the land. Even those men that did bring up an evil report upon the land died by the plague before, the, before Yahuwah. All right, so they all got sick and died right there in front of everybody. All right, keep going. You got to understand, the Most High God is very close. Right, he's very close to what's happening in the wilderness right now. So that's what's called swift judgment. Something go wrong, the Most High God reach out and touch because he's so close, it can't be allowed. Right, the disrespect, the disobedience cannot be allowed. Everything has to be addressed because he's so close. Right? He's merciful now on us, and a lot of people get away with whatever. But in order for that to happen, he has to be very different. I mean, distant. That's why you don't have people. That's why you don't have prophets that can just go talk to the Most High God right now. That's why this stuff feels so unreal to everybody. He got his back turned. He can't he, he turn his back on us. He's extremely far away. That's why people don't believe in God and all that stuff. It's because he's made himself distant. So it gives the people opportunity to not believe. Because they don't see these miracles happen. They don't see things happening. They don't see people talking to God. They don't see things being predicted. Right? That makes God distant. But him being distant means that when y'all make mistakes and when we make mistakes, guess what? He ain't going to come out and have the ground swallow us up like we're going to read about next week. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or he's not going to have a, a plague break out and everybody gets sick. But there will be a time coming where he's going to get back close. And a lot of this stuff will happen again. So we have to train our brains to not be like our ancestors. Because our ancestors were very lax because the Most High God had not been close to them. Then when he got close, they continued to be lax. We have to make sure that we're disciplined now so that when the man come and he get close to us, we just walk in line. It's edification for us rather than punishment. Keep going. <clears throat> Even those men that did bring up an evil report in the land died by the plague before Yahuwah. But Yahushua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. Mm -hmm. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Look, we be here, and we will go, up, we will go unto the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, why now do you transgress the commandment of, the, of Yahuwah? Mm -hmm. But it shall not prosper. Do not go up, for the Lord is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. Right? But, so you see the people, after the, after the ten died, then the people was like, okay, we believe you now. Right? We with you, God. You know what I'm saying? We believe you now. So uh, you're right. We can take them. We about to go up there and fight them right now. So they went on their own. They put up the armies. Because remember, they just got told that they're going to die. Right? Moses would have Moses and Aaron would have had to tell them this. Like, yeah, no, nah, we just heard from the Most High God. So, uh, no, nah, I pray for y'all. You know what I'm saying? We tried to get it done. Negotiate. He wanted to kill everybody. Every one of us he wanted to kill. But, 
Instead, he said, we're going to spend the next 40 years here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All y'all going to die. No, 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 not everybody. 20 and up. Just 20 and up. You, you good. You know what I'm saying? But the rest of y'all going to die. And then we're going to go into the land. All right? So now, maybe it's some people that hear that and be like, man, whatever. You know what I'm talking about then, right after that? Oh, when y'all 10, most like God said, and as he's speaking, a plague broke out on them. And they just died. How do you think everybody act after that? They just got told everybody going to die in this wilderness. That's 20 and up. Men of war. Right? The children going to go in fine. They just got told that. They like, oh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you talking about, boy. You know what I'm saying? Then after that, oh, a knee 10, you know what I'm saying? They going to get hit with a plague. Now, all of a sudden, them boys drop dead with a plague. That make the first part a little more believable, don't it? We might be here for 40 years, right? After that, it's like, no, we can take these boys. You know what I'm saying? What you talk? I never believe them. You know what I'm saying? Good riddance. You know what I'm saying? Where, where Caleb at? We can get them right now. We got your sword. Come on, let's go get them. So they all, they get together, and not all of them, but a group go up and they try to fight because they try to take it in their own hands now, right? In their mind, they showing, no, we got faith too. We just like Caleb. We shouldn't have to stay here until we 40. I mean, we, we shouldn't have to stay here 40 years. We should be able to walk into the land too. Right? So they go up. Moses like, don't do that. <laughs> Moses like, God ain't with you. Right? But they don't listen to him. Watch this. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that you be not smitten before your enemies. Right? So they don't whoop your butt. What he said? Don't go. You know what I'm saying? Moses like, God ain't even with you. They don't matter whoop your darn butt. All right, keep going. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword because you are turned away from Yahuwah. He told me, y'all going to lose. Therefore, right? Therefore, Yahuwah will not be with you. Mm -hmm. But they presume to go up to the hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Mm -hmm. And the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them and discomfited them, e even unto Hormah. They kicked their butt. No, I ain't, I'm gonna go get some. That's it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm next chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. This 15? Yeah. Uh, jump on down to the end of 15. It's like verse. Uh, so in the very, very first part, it starts to uh, talk about some of the sacrifices. It, uh, it, it talks about the sacrifices and it um, talks about some of the. Uh, the uh, unintentional, the un unleavened cake that you can bring with it, you know, what I'm saying? the unleavened bread that you can bring with it, accident sins, and yeah, all the snares. So, it's much like what we read before, except now he's telling them you can also bring additional stuff, right? You could do bring, you remember, we had the meat offering, which is really a food offering where you bring the grain, so it's a lot more of the grain. He's saying, along with your peace offering and your sin offering, the unintentional sin offering, you can bring additional grain for the priest, okay. Jump on down. Give me, what does verse like 21 say? Is that what I want? Mm, you want 32. 32? Yeah. Give me verse 32. This is uh, Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Mm-hmm. No, I want before that. Before that? Okay. Uh, 20, what? 22. And if you have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord has spoken unto Moses... Even all that the Lord has commanded you by the hand of Moses from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforth word among your generations, then it shall be if ought be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bull for now a burnt you can offering. Skip down below that. And, and if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she goat the you first year. Is 31 you what shall, I want? Twenty nine says, "You shall have one law for him that sins through ignorance, both for him that's born and the stranger that sojourns." I didn't think it started off with the man picking up sticks. All right, my fault. That's, that's my bad. This is uh, November chapter of uh, November. This is Numbers chapter 13, 32. 15, verse thirty one. Thirty two. Thirty two. It's Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty two. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And they that found him gathered sticks, brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto the congregation. 
and they put him in ward because he was not de because it was not declared what should be done to him. Right. So all they saw is this man. He is picking. He is gathering sticks on the Sabbath. So they didn't know exactly how to handle. Like, is this wrong? Should we deal with this? So they brought him in. They put him in ward, which is jail. So they put him in jail. Right. But they took him to Moses to try to figure out how should we handle this. Let's see. And the Lord said to Moses, the man shall. So this is what Yahuwah you said. Watch. The man shall surely be put to death. Right, Moses, I got you. Tell him. Now, you know what I'm saying? Now, I fall into the law. You know what I'm saying? He'll surely be put to death. Watch this. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. Mm -hmm. And all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died, mm -hmm. as the Lord commanded Moses. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Mm -hmm. And that they... What? When you stone people with stones, you just throw rocks at them? Yeah, big old rocks. Yeah. Like, imagine you hit with a big old rock across your face. It would break your skull or something like that. Yeah. That's how it is. They throw them into you, you know what I'm saying, to kill them. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, it is a tough way to die. They make them fringes on the, in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And right. Show, so... After, after the gentleman is, is stoned to death, right, now the Most High God said, now, what y'all should do now, <laughs> go ahead and put some fringes at the bottom of your clothes, right, and put a blue ribbon on it. And for what reason? And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them, that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you use to go a whoring. Right, so he's saying use that as a reminder. Because this man who picking up what it suggests, you don't say this necessarily, but what it suggests is this man who picking up sticks, he just forgot. He forgot it was the Sabbath. He forgot he wasn't supposed to be doing it. Most like God said, that ain't no excuse. What you should do, you put fringes at the bottom of your clothes. Right? Let that serve as a reminder for you that you better be doing everything I told you to do. Right? Keep going. That you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Mm -hmm. I am Yahuwah your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. To be your God, I am Yahuwah your God. Mm -hmm. That's it. Let's go. Uh, we can't go into 16, huh? Mm. All right, so we'll pick up with 16 next week. 16 going to tell us about the legend of Korah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a different legend. Um, so any questions? No, boy. Which one? You said she? Yeah. He got swallowed up. Oh. You mixing the cartoon up with it, you know what I mean? Because he said the legend. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, when, uh, when the Levites got swallowed up. The men of Koath, some of them. No, you take too much on you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love this thing. <laughs> There's a lot to learn from this one. Yeah, well, so well, we'll hold on, Moses, we got it too. Yeah, we'll we'll dig, dig into it next week. Right, what Moses told him too, like y'all can't touch the incense. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that Moses had to deal with. You can see Moses' attitude is changing though. Right, at first he was arguing with the people and trying to, you know, what I'm saying, trying to convince them. In this last one, it don't even say nothing about Moses saying anything about, you know, what I'm saying, going up into the land and all that. He left that thing alone. That's how I like to believe. He didn't say nothing. He said it. You know, so I like to believe Moses just like he boy. You know what I mean? boy. Y'all gonna learn. He's like, oh, you want to like the instance? Okay, go get, go get your instance then. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go get it. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. When Cora talked to him, he just like, he just, you know what I'm saying? He didn't argue with nothing. They came and said it. He just like, all right, y'all bring y'all stuff. Meet us here tomorrow. Most <laughs> I gotta choose. You know what I'm saying? Most I gotta choose. But we'll talk about it next like, week. I didn't steal not one doggy from them. What's they But problem? you know, he didn't say nothing to them, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They said they said that they gonna do they you know what I'm saying they gonna do their little ceremony. Most like you just went right to the most I got. Don't respect nothing they do. <laughs> yeah, you did. I didn't take nothing from. I don't respect nothing they do. I ain't take nothing from these boys. Yeah, because cool. you could tell Moses is getting to a point where he's like, oh, I know how this gonna go. Remember, most I got told him at the beginning, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna they ain't nothing not tell them to do now. You know what I'm saying? These boys gonna they boys are wicked. They ain't gonna do nothing they tell. But Moses started to get it now. Moses like. Yeah, Moses was fighting <sighs> for him at first. Like, nah, man, they good. Trust me, they didn't. Like, good. That was like, man, whatever. These boys is rough. Yeah, he's like, go get your incense. It's cool. Go ahead. So we'll look into it next week. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.